Reading from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text 13. Gam avishya cha bhutani dharayami aham ojasa pushnami chaushadhi sarva somo bhutva rasatmakaha. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Samishla Prabhupada. I enter into each planet and by my energy they stay in orbit. I become the moon and thereby supply the juice of life to all vegetables. So Krishna is continuing to say to Arjuna that how the planets and everything is staying in motion. It is understood that all the planets are floating in the air only by the energy of the Lord. The Lord enters into every atom, every planet and every living being. That is discussed in the Brahma Samhita. So how does Lord enter into every atom, every planet, every living being? In his form as Paramatma. So when he enters into everything, it does not mean that he gives up his original form of Sham Sundar. No, Krishna is unlimited. He can expand unlimitedly. He's not limited to us. It's because we can't expand. We cannot limit Krishna in his expansion. So Krishna expands as the Paramatma, enters into every atom, and that's how he's maintaining everything. That's how everything has a shape. And yet he lives by, as himself in his personal form. He is there in Goloka Vrindavan as Sham Sundar, Sham Sundar Krishna, as Brajendra Nandan Krishna, in his personal form with a blackish, uh, bluish complexion, two lotus hands holding a flute, his beautiful lotus-like eyes, curly black hair, a peacock feather on his head, shark-shaped earrings. So that is discussed in the Brahma Samhita. It is said that one plenary portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Brahma, uh, Paramatma enters into the planets, the universe, the living entity, and even into the atom. So due to the end, Due to his entrance, everything is appropriately manifested. When the spirit soul is there, a living man can float on the water. But when the living spark is out of the body and the body is dead, the body sinks. Of course, when it is decomposed, it floats just like straw and other things. But as soon as the man is dead, he at once sinks in the water. So. We can see that when, uh, uh, when we are alive, we can swim in the water, we can swim, we won't drown. But as soon as our soul leaves the body, we, the body will drown to the bottom of the water. Then of course, once the body starts decomposing, it will float back up. But the, the idea is because the soul is there, then the body has that energy to keep afloat. So similarly, all these planets are floating in space and this is due to the entrance of the supreme energy of the supreme personality of Godhead. So because Krishna is entering into every atom of this material creation as the Paramatma, he's the Paramatma in every atom. That's the reason everything has its proper shape if all the planets are staying in their orbit. His energy is sustaining each planet, just like a handful of dust. If someone holds a handful of dust, there is no possibility of the dust falling. But if one throws it in the air, it will fall down. Similarly, these planets which are floating in the air are actually held in the fist of the universal form of the Lord. So Krishna in his universal form, where all the planets are in his, in his body, he's holding these planets in his hand. So that's why they are they are going in the proper orderly manner in their orbit. Otherwise, if he was not doing, everything would have scattered everywhere. So it is wrong to say that, oh, there was just a big bang, there was just a big cloud and there was a bang and then everything became in place. That is just as saying, every, there, was no, uh, there was no country of India first, it was just dust and we've slept in the morning, uh, in the night and there was a big bang and then India was created. 
uh, everything was so nicely put with all its railway tracks was there. The cities were already made. The signal systems were there. The shops, everything landed in place. How can a big bang uh, make everything proper? A bang destroys things. It doesn't make things into a proper, uh, proper order or a proper pattern. So similarly, uh, yeah, we went. by his strength and energy, all moving and non-moving things stay in their place. It is said in the Vedic hymns that because of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the sun is shining and the planets are steadily moving. Were it not for him, all the planets would scatter like dust in air and perish. Similarly, it is due to the Supreme Personality of Godhead that the moon nourishes all vegetables. Due to the moon's influence, the vegetables become delicious. Without the moonshine, the vegetables can neither grow nor taste succulent. So where, how does the taste in the vegetables come? It's because of the moonshine. And Krishna says that he is the splendor of the moon. All light begin, begins from Krishna. So if, if the moon was not there, we wouldn't have vegetables. And then they, uh, how would we live? So Krishna is sustaining us. He's made this proper, such a proper system. Human society is working, living comfortably and enjoying food due to the supply from the Supreme Lord. Otherwise, mankind could not survive. The word rasatmakaha is very significant. Everything becomes palatable by the agency of the Supreme Lord through the influence of the moon. So how Krishna, he's organized everything for us. He's maintaining us to such detail. He's thought of us oh, that we need to eat vegetables to, to sustain this human body. And so to sustain the vegetable, to have the vegetables have a nice succulent taste, he's also made the moon and he's made the sunshine. So it's such a proper system. Everything is in a proper system here. Then reading on, uh, 15.14. Aham vish vanaro bhutva praninam deham ashritaha prapana samayuktaha pachami anam chaturritham. I am the fire of digestion in the bodies of all living entities, and I join with the air of life, outgoing and incoming, to digest the four kinds of foodstuff. According to Ayurvedic Shastra, we understand that there is a fire in the stomach which digests all food sent there. When the fire is not blazing, there is no hunger. And when the fire is in order, we become hungry. Sometimes when the fire is not going nicely, treatment is required. In any case, this fire is representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, I, the modern science don't know, but Ayurveda, they know that how is the food digested? Because there is fire in the stomach and the diseases come when this fire is not burning properly. And who is this fire? It's a representative of Krishna. So imagine Krishna not only gives us the vegetables to eat, he also becomes the fire to help us digest the vegetables. So how to every minute degree he is maintaining us. We, we are not even able to digest. We don't say, okay, I'm eating the food. Now food, you pass through the windpipe. Now you go to the stomach. Now fire, I'm going to light like a match. I will light the fire in my stomach and my food will be digested. No, it's automatically happening. The Krishna system is so perfect. Vedic mantras, Brahad Aran Kya Upanishad, 5.9.1 also confirm that the Supreme Lord or Brahman is situated in the form of fire within the stomach and is digesting all kinds of foodstuff. Ayam Agnir Vaishnavaro Yo Yam Anta Purushe Yenedam Anam Pachyate. Therefore, since he is helping the digestion of all kinds of foodstuff, the living entity is not independent in the eating process. Unless the Supreme Lord helps him in digesting, there is no possibility of eating. He thus produces and digests foodstuff 
and by his grace we are enjoying life so even in the brahad aranya upanishad it is stated that krishna is the fire in the stomach that's help that's helping us to digest the food so krishna he's first giving us the food to eat then he's giving us the capability to eat the food and then he's helping us to digest and in this way we are enjoying our life so we are so dependent on krishna so dependent it's only out of our envy that we disregard krishna and we don't want to accept that we are dependent on him but just by not accepting our dependence on him does not remove the fact does not deny the fact that in actuality we are totally dependent on him now because of our arrogance because of our envy because of our pride we don't want to admit that we are dependent on krishna but that does not mean that we are not actually dependent on krishna he is still supporting us in the vedanta sutra 1.2.27 this is also confirmed shabda dibyo anta pratishcha nakcha the lord is situated within sound and within the body within the air and even within the stomach as the digestive force there are four kinds of food stuff some are drunk some are chewed some are licked up and some are sucked and he is the digestive force for all of them so there are four kinds of food stuff like drink there are liquids that we can drink you know we, there's so many foods that we drink yogurt lassi milkshakes chewed majority of our food we are chewing fruits vegetables grains and then licked up there are certain fruits that we can lick uh, like even the lemon we can lick them and then there's certain foods that they are sucked up like mangoes we could suck the juice so and but then all these varieties of food stuff krishna helps to us to digest them without krishna we wouldn't be able to digest anything that we eat we are so dependent on him yeah so we can stop here is that okay yeah so we can stop here bhagavad gita ki jai shri prabhu pad ki jai gaur bhakta vrind ki jai gaur prem nand hari hari bol thank you for joining